The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention reports death rates from prescription opioid pain reliever overdoses in America quadrupled during the last decade. The connection between pain management drugs and addiction is undeniable, but may be entirely preventable. New Jersey has a prescription monitoring program that collects data on controlled substances. Pharmacies must submit that data weekly, and then doctors can access the prescription history for each patient. Only 23% are registered now, but starting now, it's mandatory for physicians in order to renew their licenses. Joining us is the director and founding director, actually, of the pain management program at the JFK Johnson Rehabilitation Institute, Dr. Iqbal Jaffrey. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. To the, what extent is this program working? This program is uh, working. Still, I would like to see more physicians using this prescription drug monitoring program. Some of the physicians say that it's cumbersome because they're used to a different kind of electronic medical records, electronic pharmaceutical records, and this one isn't fitting in with those. Is that true, or are they just? Well, I can give you my experience. Yeah. To me, it's not cumbersome. It takes about one minute to go to the screen of your computer and look at the prescription data of the patient you are prescribing the medications. So I feel that we should all make an extra effort to use this program. Pain has been called the fifth vital sign. Every doctor gives pain medication right now. Should they? I have a different approach. It can be a fifth, it is a fifth vital sign, but every doctor should not necessarily be giving the pain medication. Why they should give pain medication that's my question, because every pain does not need pain pill. Right. Are there different, um, different reasons that you would use heavy opioids to treat something? Is there a difference between uh, uh, treating a pain that is acute uh, but not chronic? I can understand that acute pain, yes, you can give uh, pain medications, but start with non-opioids. For example, if you start with NSAIDs, you know, and all non-opioids, if it does not work, you can give opioids. For chronic pain condition, it's totally different thing. Acute pain, I consider as a symptom, but chronic pain, I can treat and evaluate and treat as a disease, as syndrome. Right, and you don't have to use opioids for no, that? No, you don't have to use. Plus, each pain is different and there are pain conditions which are not treated with opioids. Can you tell, and can other doctors tell, uh, what patient, what individual patient might have a propensity to become addicted? In, pain, in our pain program, we have a pain psychologist, and she evaluates the patient before the patient comes and sees us. And she will, after evaluation, tell us this patient has a problem with uh, drug uh, abuse. Even uh, cigarette smoking, right? If there is a problem with cigarette smoking or any other substance abuse, yes, psychologist is appropriate person to evaluate the patient and then present to physician. And then the physician makes a call makes the based call. on... Yes. Um, legislators have proposed solutions to opioid addiction. What role do doctors have in that? The doctors, healthcare professionals, we have to, first of all, I believe in education. We have to educate physicians, whether they are consultant or they are general practitioners, even medical students, about pain, about acute pain, about chronic pain, about non-pharmacological approaches of the pain treatment. And also there are certain medications which are appropriate for neuropathic pain, not opioids. And among the non-pharmacological approach, I believe multidisciplinary approach is the best approach for the patient with chronic pain. When chronic pain... So you're talking about acupuncture, physical acupuncture, therapy? Acupuncture, physical therapy, and role of psychology. Pain patients, they have not only problem with pain, but coping with the pain. They have stress. They have weakness of the muscles, so they need physical therapy and psychological support counseling how to cope with the pain and biofeedback and relaxation techniques. Dr. Iqbar Jaffrey, thank you for being with us.
my pleasure.